One of the risks you need, of course, to be aware of is fire. Again, fire that comes from external sources and fire that comes from internal sources, from within your building, your institution. So how can you identi identify what is actually threatening your institution, your cultural heritage? When we start with internal, of course, there are sources like electricity. You might have a workshop on the premises for building uh, frames and crates and display walls, whatever. So it's important to be aware what kind of machinery do you use? Again, electricity, where are the sources? Where are the potential threats that can, yeah, potentially cause a fire and as such threaten um, the cultural heritage that you're trying to protect? Another thing that can happen is if you're working at one part or in one place in the grounds or on the grounds with maybe chemical solutions, with chemical um, substances that, again, uh, might be threatening um, the cultural heritage because they can cause a fire. So identify these sources. Look what is around. What, um, do you, what, what kind of standards do you need to meet? For that, it is important that you maybe look at the uh, the legal framework, the legal um, standards that you need to fulfill. Ask an expert on you know electric on electronic systems, on um, you know the whole workshop thematic, to identify exactly what is there and how to to handle that on a in a safe uh, way on a regular basis, and. Then move on to what if the worst happens? What is there in systems to um, detect the fire and in systems to maybe then extinct the fire? So extinguishers, fire extinguishers, portable fire extinguishers, maybe you actually do sprinkler uh, in parts of the building. There, again, it's also really important to be aware where is the cultural heritage that you want to protect. So where are like common areas where, where no art or no cultural heritage is displayed um, or affected by, for example, water when you extinguish it? Where are areas where they are more sensitive, where there actually is art on display? That leads us to the next step. So identify the threats, identify the potential sources, see how that can be prevented in the first place by handling it correctly, by updating the systems, by, uh, you know, keeping the standard, a good standard, a safe standard, and then identifying where are the, the areas in your building, in your premises that needs to be, or well, that where is art, where is cultural heritage, and how would that potentially be affected in case of a fire? Fire is pretty tricky because you have to not only think about the fire as a threat, but then also about the water or the substances that you need to extinguish the fire, because that, of course, also causes damage. So you have to think in two steps. First of all, if it burns, how can I contain the fire? How can I make sure, well, first of all, that it doesn't break out? Second, how can I contain it? There are special doors, special walls. Um, all kinds of things that the fire department and um, experts in uh, in building fire resistant can help you with. And then once worst case happens, it does burn. Some the fire department comes, or you try to be first responder responders with fire extinguishers, which of course is the first resort. Um, what can what happens to the art that is around? Uh, if you have um, a very isolated fire, for example. Um, you have a fire extinguisher with water or with foam or with um, with uh, powder. So how does that or these substances affect the art that is around you? Say pictures, paintings, uh, works on papers, whatever. Um, water is very, uh, it can be very targeted, right? If you use an, a fire extinguisher. So it is very much just concentrated on whatever burns. Powder is very efficient and you might need it for special fires, but be aware that it also yeah, is all over the place and um, might affect paintings, whatever art that is surrounded um, or is around the source of the fire. So it's not actually 
threatened by the fire, but it is threatened by whichever means you use to extinguish the fire. Also on a grander scale, if really worst case, again, uh, the whole building burns or parts of the building burn um, and you need to, the fire, to uh, fire department and they come with the water that uh, obviously they use in, in large quantities, be aware that this fire um, or the extinguishing of this fire will affect the building and everything that is in it because now you'll have a water damage after the fire damage. So talk to your fire department so that they know exactly what is where. They need to know what they, in case of a fire, in case of a, an emergency, need to protect, what they need to watch out for. They need to know where are the important systems, attachment points, um, you know, ways around their build, your building that uh, they need to know so that they can react fast and targeted. This is uh, why it's so important to not wait for the worst case scenario, but prepare in advance, talk to your fire department, have um, a disaster response plan, have an emergency plan, know exactly who do you need to contact to evacuate um, art, to obviously also evacuate uh, people, to make the, the building safe, to um, know exactly uh, yeah, who to contact uh, at the fire department so that they know exactly their way around. This, of course, needs to be trained. This is not just a plan that you, um, that you, uh, you know, put together and then put in some drawer and pull out if something happens. So this needs to be trained with everyone involved on a very regular basis so that in case of a fire, it actually really just uh, clicks in place and um, prevents uh, the worst and mitigates the overall damage that can happen. So this is for fire that originates in your, um, in your on your premises, in your building. Also be aware of how your, your um, building, how your institution is situated. You might be uh, close to uh, to a woodland, to a brush zone where you know that there might be wildfires. This is not necessarily under your control, but you know again need to know how do you react. This is again where the disaster plan comes in. So be aware of the different sources within your um, institution, within your building, and then also coming from a site. Um, are you in the middle of a city? Or are you at the outskirts? Are you in a, an area where there are a lot of wildfires or the risk of a wildfire is high? And again, identify the sources and then talk to the respective experts when it comes to um, the whole architecture, the, the concept of your building, of your, um, yeah, of your whole security and fire detection system um, from the let's say mechanical aspects like specific doors, specific walls, specific materials you build with or you use in your whole um, exhibition scenario, but also um, about the electronic uh, aspects and parts. So you need a smoke detection system. Um, you know, is there maybe uh, a sprinkler system where if you do employ that, where would you do that again? It is, this is not a simple one fits all answer. You really need to look at your, the layout of your, um, of your institution, the layout of your building. Where do I have what? Again, map. Where is the most important art? What is movable? What is not movable? In case of a disaster, what can be evacuated? And uh, what can't be because it's just too heavy or too big, or it is actually something that is um, part of the building. So um, be very aware where the threat comes from, how that can be detected, and where is what you want to protect, and how can it be affected by the fire, and then in the second step, uh, by the water or whatever material um, you use to extinguish the fire.